All right, everything is right as rain. I got my coffee, I got my donuts. I'm here in Seguin, Seguin, Texas. We're outside of probably San Antonio area, something like that. I don't know where I am. So I haven't done a video in a while. Figured I'd give you guys an update. Looks like there's something on this lens. <laughs> Find a good place to put this camera. <sighs> All right, yeah, so the shows have been great. So far we've done two shows. We, we did uh, Houston on Thursday and Corpus Christi last night. Really good time. I was kind of worried, like, the tickets for Texas have moved a lot slower this time. Like, we had 125 pre-sale on Wednesday. We were stuck at like 65-ish or something for, for weeks. And the, the tour's been on sale for months, you know? I was kind of worried, like, oh man, nobody's coming to our shows, you know, in Texas. I'm gonna let this truck drive by. Hold on, my wife is calling me. Hello. Okay, well, it's good to hear your voice. Hello. All right. We were stuck at like 65 pre-sale for, for Corpus Christi. Oh, there she is again. This is like the worst time to make a video. Hello. All right, where was I? Sometimes you wonder if like your wife knows when you're about to do something and then she like calls you right in the middle. That's okay, I haven't talked to her. All right, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking about shows. Shows in Texas have been good. Looking forward to it tonight. We got this party that we're doing. Ended up with over 300 paid last night at House of Rock in Corpus Christi. And as I said, we had, we had, we ended up on Wednesday with like 125 pre-sale, which I thought was kind of low. And then we sold like another hundred tickets uh, in two days leading up to it. And then by the end of it, I think it was like 316 paid or something. That ended up being really cool. And the place packs out nicely and it's just, it's good. It's a good energy, you know, from the crowd, everybody's singing along and stuff, having a good time. So I definitely saw a lot of new faces as well. So it's nice to see because, you know, we've been stuck on this like 150, 200 tickets a night for years. And then we could never seem to, to get out of that. Now, since like Shell Shock came out and the, the shows have been like more energetic on our side, like I feel like we're putting on better shows and the buzz is really getting out there. And also like, you know, I know that like me making videos and live streaming and stuff, and just trying to be even more, you know, ubiquitous, dare I say, on the social media landscape, I think that's really helped. And, you know, it would be great if, you know, after this story, even after the last run from back in the winter, the numbers were really good there. It was like, our, it was probably our best tour ever, honestly, best headliner tour between like ticket sales and merch sales and stuff. So I feel like we're picking up where we left off. The momentum is still there. And it's a bunch of new cities, of course. There's a bunch of spots we haven't hit in a while. I'm hoping by the end of it that we'll see that bump to like that 250, 300 a night threshold, which means that the money goes up, the promoters can pay us more. And that just means we can pay our crew better. We can do more production on stage. We, we can justify bringing out the bigger vehicle, the rental, you know, to have all these people and just have the show quality go up all around and everybody's happy, you know? That's what the idea is. It's to, it's to organically grow and justify being able to bring out all the crew guys, all the production and stuff that we do. You know, it's, it's, it's just a natural organic thing. And since we came back from COVID, the whole plan was to play small venues and try to sell those out and just try to organically grow outside of them, you know, to the point where it's like now we have to go to a bigger room and tickets are becoming more scarce. And so people are like, oh, we need to buy tickets. I'm, I'm real big on pushing tickets ahead of time, like pre-sales. Um, I know I've said this before, the more tickets we sell before the show, the better, because the promoter is happy, the band the morale is up because we know that we're gonna have a good show, we're gonna have a lot of people in there. And it just, it makes everything better. So if you know that you're going to a show, please just buy the tickets, you know? And I get it, like ticket fees are what they are. And we, we try to work with 
uh, ticketing sites that don't have those insane fees, you know. But if we do a Live Nation venue, we're sort of, it's out of our hands, unfortunately. So I get it. If you can't buy tickets up front, you know, I get it. But if you can, they, it would be really awesome. It really helps. Plowing ahead, as Bill Burr says. Tonight we got this party kicking in the sticks, and I think it's going to be a lot of um, Good Vibers, Beach Rockers fam, people that are in that group on Facebook, people that are in my stream every week, all my chatters. I think it's just going to be a good family vibe tonight. Autic Empire is going to be there. We got Cloud9 vibes. Dale and the Z Dubs are like a surprise. They're going to play after us for like the midnight set. Cashed out, good friends of ours. So it's going to be a good homie fest. It's going to be uh, lots of party favors, I'm sure. Food, things like that. Weed, mushrooms. I've been doing the weed a lot more. I've been doing, how, how boomers does that sound of me? I've been doing the weed more. I never liked smoking it. I was never like big on smoking weed. I, don't, I just don't like smoking anything. And I didn't like the way it made me feel counterproductive. Like I, I just want to chill out and that's fine, you know, in the right situation. But I'm someone that's always working and always has something to do. Now lately, I've been trying to detach myself a bit and get away from the work, playing video games, just taking time off to just fuck off, like nothing. It's kind of like one of those things, like you work really hard and then it, you don't get the results, you know? And I've been doing that for decades. And so I'm like, well, if I'm not gonna get the results that I want, you know, working that much harder isn't gonna increase that, so I'm just gonna dial it back then, you know? Because I think there's a point where you gotta like, you gotta stop and take care of yourself for a minute and just stop being stressed out. And video games is huge for that. And I've been meaning to get back to Twitch and, and really like playing video games. My point was at night I've been taking gummies a lot. I do the five millies because 10 can, can be pretty intense for me. And anything over that is just crazy. And I accidentally took a 25 milligram the other night, the night before we left for tour, because I was supposed to be hanging out with my wife and chilling. And I thought it was a five and it ended up being a 25. So I was like, babe, I have to go to bed. I actually try to make myself throw up. I try to make myself throw up so, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get all crazy and just zooted from it. Didn't work, I tried. I've never tried to do that before. It's not easy to make yourself throw up. Uh, and I fucked up my vocal cords doing that too. So that's something else, that's another lesson I learned. This week has been really hard to sing at first and it's been harder to get back, you know. After warming up for a while, it's fine, but like, it's taken a lot longer, you know. So, not gonna do that again. Bro, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. You too, brother. <laughs> it's interesting to see, like, YouTubers out in the wild. I think people are just used to it now, for the most part. It's not so weird. I remember trying to take cameras into places, and they'd be like, you can't film in here, you know? And that may still be true to, to an extent. Like, you definitely don't want to go into a public space, a, a business, and, you know, take your camera in there and expect to not get shut down. If they ask you to turn the camera off, turn it off, you know, don't be a dick. But being out in the wild like this and have, having people shout you out like that is pretty cool, you know? So tomorrow we're gonna be in San Antonio. I'm not sure how San Antonio is gonna go. We'll see, I gotta look at the ticket sales on that one again. I'll make a little video for that, just shouting it out tomorrow. And then we make our way to Albuquerque. We haven't been there in years. And then we're gonna go to uh, Mesa, Arizona, which is doing okay, actually, not bad. It's like a thousand cap venue, so it's really big. So it's not gonna sell out. It's not even gonna get close to selling out, but you know, if we can get, if we can get like 300 people in there, I'll take it, it'll be good, you know? I feel like I need to change scenery because more and more cars, it, it's like lunchtime, I guess. I'm gonna get hit. Ugh. We're just out here in this Planet Fitness parking lot. Just bringing joy to the masses. This is, this is the cost of it. That's us right there, that vehicle. We rented an RV. This time it's a custom RV, and, and we usually take the bandwagon out when, when we rent, but there were no bandwagons available, so we took this RV out, and I'm finding that I don't like it. It's uh, <laughs> It's actually a big pain in the ass. Um, it's, it's great because we have a driver and we have a bathroom and all that. And there's bunks and stuff. It's, I keep hitting my head on the door frame. 
and there's like this shelf in the bunk area that everyone hits their head on constantly. I have these giant bumps and even a scab right here from the first night. And I just whacked my head really good today before I started making this video. I'm definitely gonna go back to the bandwagon after this. I think if you're not freakishly tall and you only have like five or six people in your crew, if you're a band, I think the Starbust Elite would be good for you. I'm 6'6". Six, six. I barely fit in the bunk as it is. I don't know, I need space. I need space. I feel like the RV gets smaller every day. So we're going to California next week and the Cali shows usually go really well. We've got Santa Ana and San Diego already sold out. We're doing Palmdale, never played there before, so I have no idea what to expect. Um, I really need to push those shows as well. Sebastian is leaving us for the rest of the tour when we get to Mesa and we're getting <clears throat> Mike Mosarino from Aurora Wave. He's gonna come in and finish the tour with us. And then the last two shows actually, Mike from Joint Operation is gonna fill in for Sebastian. Sebastian got a gig with another band doing like TM stuff and it was a shitload of money and at the end of the day, it's like you gotta make your money, you know? We're all just trying to live. So when you guys don't see him, that's why. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the tour. I, it's just interesting, I, I'm like, I've been on tour for 18 years. This is kind of like all the shows that I've that I'd done up, up to that point in 2006, but that's when we actually left for tour and we hit the road and you know started making friends and playing for nobody in Detroit and Harker Heights, Texas. I remember playing Harker Heights, Texas in 2006 and it was our first time in Texas. And uh, there were maybe 20 people there. The, the first show, actually, we were super late to was Houston. We were super late. And the bands that we were on tour with, Rude Buddha and 33 West. 33 West was on stage at the time. There was no one there. We showed up late. I don't know what happened. Van trouble or something. There was no one in the room, and these dudes were ripping it like there were a thousand people there. They were such a good band. And no one got paid. We didn't play because there was nobody there. And, Oh, man, I don't know how we made it. I'm gonna have to make a video about that first tour and just talk about all the wonderful, the wonderfully awful things that happened. It was the best and worst tour ever, basically. I don't know how we survived it. I mean, it was before kids, so yeah, but yeah, man, what a, what a, wild, what a wild life this is. Sorry, I keep nip slipping, man. I cut, this, I cut the sleeves on this one like kind of shallow. Or, or deep, I should say. Bro, this coffee's hitting. This coffee's fucking hitting, bro. I didn't get any coffee yesterday. It was a bummer. All right, well, I don't know what else to put in this video, guys. It's, I just wanted to give you an update. It's been a minute. I haven't made a video, so figured I'd say what's up, check in, let you know what's been going on. Please hit me with any questions. I would love to like answer your questions in a future video. It'll like help me come up with stuff, help me come up with some good content. Um, you know, sometimes I don't know what to talk about, so. And I feel like I talk about the same things a lot. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Like and subscribe. Wee!